Hey, this is Van. I'm going to show you some great techniques that I use to solve network issues every day, like how to use ping packets to mark a packet capture while it is running, and an excellent TLS encryption troubleshooting filter. So whether you're new to networking or Wireshark and need to learn everything, or if you're experienced and need to skip some sections, I think there will be something for everyone in this video. So come along as we analyze with Wireshark. If you enjoy this video and would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. It really does help out. Let's start by talking about TLS and SSL issues. Some examples of these issues you may see might be an encrypted website you browse that starts with HTTPS colon slash slash and it gives you some kind of encryption error. Or the issue might be a function running on an application server that's getting data from another web server. And that function has failed, probably with a nondescript error message. There are many issues that can cause TLS or SSL to fail, but we're just going to look at some of the most common ones and how to find and troubleshoot them with Wireshark. TLS is Transport Layer Security. SSL is Secure Sockets Layer, which is a similar older version. TLS is the encryption protocol used to secure websites, applications, email, VPN connections, etc. For now, I'll just refer to it as TLS, although the acronyms TLS and SSL are many times used interchangeably, even though SSL is really the older technology. We do need to talk about security within TLS though. If you or the websites you support are not using TLS version 1.2 or version 1.3, they need to be. And you really need to turn off support for TLS version 1.1, 1.0, and SSL version 3. Notice that the ones on top, SSL 3 and all previous versions, TLS version 1.0 and TLS version 1.1. These have been deprecated because they're no longer considered secure. There are various attacks that these are susceptible to. A few of the notable ones are Poodle, Beast, Freak, Logjam, and Sweet32. Just do a web search for more info on any of these. Also, when we're looking at the list here, keep in mind that most modern browsers by default will only support TLS 1.2 and 1.3, which is another reason why you should only be using those two versions. So within Wireshark, looking at the packets, what does a successful TLS handshake look like? At the top in the graphic here, you can look over here in the info column, we'll just go through that. You see the client hello, server hello, certificate, certificate status, key exchange, server hello done, client key exchange, change cipher spec, encrypted handshake message from the server. Down below here, this is a typical successful TLS version 1.3 connection. Client hello, server hello, change cipher spec, application data, and then a packet back from the client that says change cipher spec, application data. If you notice on this second one, the TLS 1.3 connection, everything looks duplicated, and the reason that is is because this is actually two different connections. In the first packet, you can see the packet going from the client to the server with a source port of 45117. The third packet is also part of that connection. You see the destination port in that packet going back to the client at 45117. Then in the last packet, again coming from the client with a source port of 45117. So all of them that you see here with 45117 are one connection, and the ones with 45118 are another connection. The reason that there are two client hellos, two server hellos, etc., are that there are two connections and they both do need to be secured. TLS versions and Cypher Suite mismatches are the most common non-certificate issues that I see. Certificate issues will be another video all their own. If you look in the filter box here, this is the filter that we'll be using mostly today. We also may add an IP address to it, but this is my favorite one for TLS troubleshooting. And I've also updated my Wireshark filter cheat sheet with this filter. If you need to know the location of my Wireshark filter cheat sheet, it will be in the description for this video. So let's find out where we need to look in this packet capture. Again, we don't know exactly what packet where the problem starts, but we do know the name of the domain is badssl.com. That's where our user or application was having an issue. By the way, badssl.com is a great website if you need to test TLS with your web browser. Or it's also great if you want to do Wireshark captures of TLS connections on your own. So first, let's find out where our issue starts by looking for DNS packets. If a computer does not know the IP address, when it looks for badssl.com, it will have to query a DNS server first. This is how we know where the issue starts. So we're going to type in dns.qry.name equals equals quote badssl.com. 
end quote. So I see right here where the client queried for badssl.com. I'm going to mark this packet and I'm going to comment on this packet and I'm just going to say DNS query. I'm also going to note down the IP address here which is 104.154.89.105. So now let me show you another trick that I sometimes use to mark a capture in Wireshark while the Wireshark capture is in progress. When I was running this capture I used single ping packets to mark the capture in several places. I pinged my default gateway and varied the packet length each time. I would send a ping and then immediately test what I needed to. This way I knew right where my ping was, was the exact point that I started my testing. So back when I ran this capture, here's what I did. I want to ping 192.168.1.1 and use a dash n space 1, which will mean just one ping, and dash l space 300. This will make the data portion of the ICMP packet equal 300 bytes. So as you can see, one ping. And that's what I've used to mark this capture. In this case, I did one with a data length of 300. I did another one with an ICMP data length of 400, and then another one with 500. So those are the three pings that I did in various places. So the filter that I'm gonna use here to find these packets is ICMP and data.len greater than or equal to 300. So you can see the ping and the reply for each of these pings. If you'll notice here, here's the data length of 300. But if we look at the length of the actual packet, it is 340. 42, 442, and 542. I want to briefly show you why that is. And I'm going to go over this quickly, so if you want to pause it and look at it, go right ahead. So we saw that our total packet length was 342 bytes, but our data that we've added to that ping was only 300. What it is is there's an Ethernet header of 14 bytes, there's an IPv4 header of, in this case, 20 bytes, and most of the time that's what it is, but it can be bigger than that. And then the ICMP header of 8 bytes. So if you take 14 plus 20, 20 plus 8 plus our 300, then you get the 342. And that's why the total packet length is 342 bytes. But back to our pings here. I want to mark each of our pings, and then I want to comment on each of our pings also. So I'm going to go to packet comments, add new comment, and just put in first ping 300 for the second ping request that we sent out. Add new comment, second ping 400, and the last one, third ping 500. Just remember that each of these pings lines up exactly with what we were testing because it was done right before. So we're using here our TLS troubleshooting filter that again is on my Wireshark display filters cheat sheet. We're going to add two things to this filter though. We're going to add and ip.addr equal equal 104.154.89.105. That's going to show us packets only to or from that IP address. And that's the IP address that we got from our DNS packet for badssl.com. The other thing that we're going to add here so that we can see our commented frames, we're going to add or frame.comment. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, out of 4,425 packets, we've got it down to 181. And since we have our comments added, it's going to make this pretty manageable. So there's our DNS query. Let's scroll down to where our first ping starts. And right after that, we see a client hello from the client. The next packet that's listed is a server hello from the server, and then an alert. The alert says fatal description protocol version. So for the quick solution, go to the alert packet, and we see the alert message, level fatal, description is protocol version, and then version TLS 1.0. Well, this is great, but it's not going to help us talk to the apps team or the software vendor. We need a detailed reason why it failed. So let's look at the client hello. If we scroll down here in packet details, handshake protocol, client hello. And then if we look down here to extension supported versions, it says TLS 1.3 and 1.2. This is what the client supports. The client in this client hello packet is saying I support TLS version 1.3 and 1.2. Now let's go to the server hello. We see the version number in the handshake protocol, TLS 1.0. So this is really the root of the problem here. The server is only going to use TLS 1.0, which is not considered secure. And it's subject to man-in-the-middle attacks. Hey, shh, 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 hey, hey, be quiet. I'm listening. Since the client only supports version 1.2, or 1.3. Here's what we're going to tell the apps team or the software vendor. We're going to give them the host name, the IP address, and the port number, and we're going to tell them that this server is only supporting TLS version 1.0. 
That's why people are getting errors, or that's why your app function is not working. The other thing that we'll give them, if applicable, is the full URL that we were trying to hit at the time. All of these details are important, or without them, they might not be able to find that web instance. They might have many web instances on that server. If we give them all the information, then they can find the one that needs to be fixed. Well, let's assume that you told the vendor about the issue, they found the problem, and they fixed it. Or at least they think they fixed it. The second ping here is where we tried again again. So what we see this time, we see the client hello, the server hello, and the alert level fatal description protocol version. Kind of similar to the first time, but let's see if it changed any this time. In the client hello, we see under the TLS record layer, we see version TLS 1.0. This field right here can sometimes be misleading. I would say to always look in the handshake protocol client hello if you're looking for version or supported versions. In the supported versions, we've got TLS 1.3 and TLS 1.2. It's going to look the same as it did before because it's the same client. On the server side, we see, again, in the Handshake Protocol section, we see version TLS 1.1. <laughs> While this is a step forward from the application vendor, TLS 1.1 is also not considered secure. I'm listening. I also want to close in just a little bit on this particular connection where the client source port is 49408. I'm going to add a filter here of tcp.port equals 49408. So when we look at this, we see client hello, server hello, alert fatal. And then after that, the server sends its certificate and exchanges its public key and says, hey, Server hello done. In the big list of packets, it might be easy to miss that alert level fatal and just see the certificate and server key exchange server hello done and think, oh, hey, it's working. But that's not the case here. So let's remove the tcp.port equals 49408 and go back out to our big list of packets. Let's look at the very next packet after the server is sending its public key. The client increments its ephemeral port from 49408 to 49409 and sends another hello. And this continues several times. But since they can't agree on a version, server sending TLS 1.1, and the client only supports 1.2 or 1.3, the TLS connection never gets established. So we talk to the vendor again, they get back to us, and they assure us that they have fixed it this time. So we try it again, and that's where our third ping is on our third try. So we look right after our third ping, and we see, just like before, supported versions, TLS 1.3, TLS 1.2. We look at the server hello, and we see version TLS 1.2. So they both support 1.2, and in this case, they agree on everything else, so that's great. Yay! TLS 1.2 still works, but TLS 1.3 is faster and it's more secure. Oh. But it's good enough for now. Most modern browsers support it. But something to think about, version 1.2 was designed in 2008 and 1.3 was designed in 2018. So it will definitely be secure for longer. So following through with the rest of this connection, we look right here, the server sends its certificate, server key exchange, the client key exchange, and new session ticket, change cipher spec, encrypted handshake message. So at this point, we have a good TLS connection. Version 1.2, but hey, sometimes that's the best you're going to get, and we can be okay with it for now. Yay! So I think this is really a good stopping point. There's going to be a part two of this video, and it'll probably be a couple videos out. In the part two, we can look at some of the other issues with TLS connections. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Bye.